Welcome to Electro Online. And before we start solving momentum, conservation momentum problems in two dimensions, here's the last one in one dimension where it's 100% elastic, which means energy is conserved and they do not stick together after the collision. In this case, we have the large object moving to the left at the initial velocity of 5 meters per second and the smaller object moving to the left at minus 10 meters per second, which means that the small object will collide into the back of the larger object. So what will be the result? What will be the final velocities of the first and the second object? Well, again, since energy is conserved, we can use the energy conservation equation. And of course, we know that momentum is always conserved no matter what. There's no exceptions to that rule. So writing the equations, we can write that m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. All right. With the energy equation, we can write 1 half m1 v1 initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 initial squared equals 1 half m1 v1 final squared plus 1 half m2 v2 final squared. Remember, the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, so we have the initial kinetic energies of the two objects before the collision and the kinetic energies of the two objects after the collision. Remember also that V1 final and V2 final are the two unknowns in this equation and are the same two unknowns in that equation, so we can solve the two equations simultaneously to come up with the answer for V1 final and V2 final. So let's go ahead and do that. We can of course simplify this equation by multiplying both sides by 2, getting rid of the one halves. Then we plug in the numbers here, so we have a number on the left side, I have a number on the left side over here. Let's just leave off the kilograms and the meters per second to come up with a clean equation. Also remember that when the velocities are to the left, they're negative, and we do have to include the negative values in our momentum equation. All right, so m1 is 4, and v1 is a minus 5, plus m2 is 2, times v would be a minus 10, equals 4 times v1 final, plus 2 times v2 final. And then simplifying this, this is minus 20, minus 20, that's a minus 40, is equal to v, uh, 4 v1 final plus 2 v2 final. And then, of course, we can divide both sides by 2 to simplify that. We get minus 20 is equal to 2 v1 final plus v2 final. And so there we have our simplified equation from the conservation of momentum. Doing the same over here for m1, we have, uh, let's see here, 4 times a minus 5 quantity squared plus a 2 times a minus 10 quantity squared. Notice that for kinetic energy, it doesn't matter if we put a negative or a positive there because kinetic energy can only be positive. And then here we have 4 v1 final squared plus 2 v2 final squared. Okay, so this gives us 25 times 4, that's 100. So that would be 100 plus, that would be 100 times 2 or 200 equals 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared. Combining this, we get 300 equals 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared. Sometimes you may wonder, why am I doing it so many times? Why do I do such small little steps? Well, actually, it helps to do small little steps so you don't make any mistakes in the arithmetic. And even then, I still sometimes make mistakes. All right, divide both sides by 2. We get 150 equals 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. And there's our simplified equation that we derive from the conservation of energy concept. Okay, now we have two equations of two unknowns. We're going to take this equation, solve it for v2 final, and then plug that into the equation over here for v2 final to eliminate it in our second equation. So we end up with v2 final is equal to minus 20, and when we move this to the other side, equal sign, minus 2 v1 final. So we're going to take this relationship and plug it into here. Okay, since I need a little extra room, I'll move over this way. And so we have 150 equals 2 v1 final squared plus v2 final squared, but v2 final is equal to this. So we have minus 20 minus 2 v1 final quantity squared. Okay, now we just have to work that out algebraically. So we have 150 equals 2 v1 final squared plus, okay, 
The first term squared, that would give me 400. The last term squared would be plus 4v1 final squared. And then the middle term comes from multiplying these two together and multiply that times 2. So it's twice the product of these two. The product is 40 times 2 is plus 80 v1 final. The reason why it's plus, of course, because I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, which gives me a plus. So everything is positive. All right, now we move everything over to one side, consolidate terms. So we get 0 is equal to, we have 2 plus 4, which is 6 v1 final squared. We have plus 8 v final, v1 final. And then we have 400 minus 150, or plus 250. We could simplify this a little bit more by dividing everything by 2. So we have 0 equals 3v1 final squared plus 4v1 final plus 125. Now we're going to take this equation here and use the quadratic formula to find v1 final. All right, let's do that. So coming up here, we say that v1 final equals minus b, which would be minus 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that would be 16, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 125. But now I have a problem because I'm going to have a negative sign underneath the radical. Right away, that spells trouble. That would, would, that would seem to indicate that there's no possible solution. But I don't know. I don't seem to believe that. So I need to go find out to see if I actually made a mistake somewhere. Ah, there we go. I found my mistake. Ah, this should be an 80 v1 final. This should be 80. And this should therefore be 40. Ah, and so when we come up here, yes. So this would be minus 40 plus or minus the square root of 40 squared, which is 1600, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 125. And the whole thing divided by 2a, a is 3, that would be 6. Okay, so I did make a mistake. See, just as I was saying, I still make mistakes once in a while. So 12 times 125, subtract that from 1600. Okay, so that is equal to minus 40 plus or minus the square root of 1600 minus 1500, which is 100, divided by 6, which is equal to minus 40 plus or minus 10 over 6, which is, well, that's going to give me two possible answers. Minus 40 minus 10 is minus 50 divided by 6, so minus 50 divided by 6, or if I add the 10, I get minus 30 divided by 6, which is minus 5. Minus 5. So what is minus 50 divided by 6? 50 divided by 6 equals 8.33. So let me just write 8.33. So minus 8.33. And so that would be meters per second, and that would be for V1 final. All right, so which of those two answers is the most likely answer? So um, V1 initial was minus 5 meters per second. It gets hit from the back, and so I would assume that then the final velocity would have to be greater than minus 5 meters per second, at least in the negative direction. It's not likely that it would get hit from the back and that it would maintain its initial velocity. So very unlikely that it would be moving at minus 5 after the collision. So it looks like this would be the most likely velocity after the collision. And so we could say that V1 final therefore would be equal to 8 or minus, because it's moving to the left, minus 8.33 meters per second, and that would then be the final velocity of mass number 1. Now we use that number in here to find velocity for mass number 2, so V2 final equals minus 20, minus 2 times a minus 8.33. Be careful about all the negative signs. A minus 2 times a minus 8 is, of course, positive, so we multiply this times 2, and we add that to minus 20 and we have v2 final therefore is equal to minus 3.33 meters per second whoop that doesn't look like a second here but there we go so v1 final minus 8.33 meters per second v2 final minus 3.33 meters per second and that's how we do that problem